Minded Podcast powered by the CDA Paris Edition, presented by Maison et Objet and Paris Design Week. Hi, Frida, how are you? Hello, Beauty. Thank you for having me. We had the opportunity to go to dinner last night, get to know each other a little bit more. How are you feeling? How uh, um, being in Paris now, what's going on in your mind? Very excited and very honored. Uh, Charlotte Bergen has been a big reference of mine for many years, so it's just thrilling to be receiving this award. A little secret though, today later on, she's gonna have the chance to visit the apartment. So I'm sure you get yes. a little treat. Not everybody gets to see it, and that's a nice thing to do it as well. Yes, it's a, it's a highlight. Thank I you. know, for <laughs> sure, for sure. But it feels like you being in this roller coaster in the last few years so much has happened and you've been given so many great opportunities to, to do work and your work has been highlighted all over the world do you sometimes take a moment to stop and kind of embrace or at least acknowledge what's going on and kind of retrospective what's what's been happening to you that's a good question um right now there's very little time actually to to stop um, but there's always like these moments you know, when you have opportunities of meeting new people or just getting to know uh, figures that you have admired for a long time and it's a moment of reflection of course mm -hmm. um, and always with the team you know, it's nice to talk and to think about where we are where we want to go so I, I try to keep that in mind as well yes now, when you are reaching a position in your career right now that you are presented with a lot of options, I'm assuming a lot of people come to you with different, you know, work options, uh, collaborations, different opportunities. How are you looking at those things and trying to figure it out which, you know, opportunity you want to tack on? Well, it's... Of course, we are evaluating all the time the type of work that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been very fortunate uh, to receive all of these invitations in the past few years that are very exciting. Uh, many things that we didn't even imagine would happen to us. Um, but at the same time, we want to still focus on the things that keep us learning, uh, where we can provide some new input, things that keeps us fresh. Um, so I think those are the things that we think about when we are looking at new projects, either um, whether it's the first time that we do something that becomes very exciting or whether we really like the client because uh, they are providing like new ideas mm -hmm. or questioning some of the things that we're also questioning. So the, the challenge is always there now. What are some of those new ideas and challenges that uh, specifically like right now that you are facing or trying to conquer through your current projects? Well, the, obviously the most important one is now uh, designing the new Tangway for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And we are rethinking how we can exhibit art and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a big one. Um, but also we are doing some other exercises in Mexico, for example, about hospitality or housing um, or what a communal kitchen is, for example. No, So the work's still very diverse. Um, we're looking into designing furniture in the past few years also. Um, just like to keep things in different scales, mm -hmm. different types of programs. We want to keep it fresh. You know, we, want, we don't want to specialize in something. We want to be good at making things new all the time. Uh, the Met kind of brings a very interesting challenge, as you mentioned, like how can we incorporate architecture and coaching in a different perspective, how its exhibition can have a more organic feeling naturally. How, what, what kind of researching are you, are you kind of invested in? What is a little bit of the top process when you decided to pursue that, that project? Well, the first thing that we did was to be at the Met for a year. The office was installed there. And there was a lot of conversations with the curatorial team, with Max Holland, the director, um, and with all the team that is working in the museum to really understand what uh, exhibiting uh, art in that institution was. Um, and also just looking at many other references. Um, we haven't been able to travel to all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a plan. Um, but yeah, basically just trying to understand the institution from within. 
How has been those conversations? I'm sure they uh, fully support your vision, but it also is a big organization, as you mentioned before, as an institution. I'm sure I can talk about that. Okay, we cannot, <laughs> we will not talk about that. We're gonna move on and talk about your brand new office in New York City. <laughs> it's okay. How is that, uh, how it's like opening a new office in Shun country right now? It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, it started very small. Mm -hmm. um, it was at the first day that I was in New York, I was on my own. And it was uh, later uh, that same week that three of the team in Mexico City flew to New York to join me. Um, some of them were in the um, competition. Okay. Um, so it was just the four of us. And a little bit later, two people from New York joined the studio, and now we're 11 people. So it has been growing organically over the, the, the year. And uh, now we're reinstalling the, the office in a new space, um, and it's just feel fresh and uh, new, so it's exciting. Was that always part of the plan, to eventually have an office in New York? It was. Uh, we have been working also on two residential projects in New York uh, for the past three years. Um, but COVID uh, happened. Yeah. So the idea was to have a studio in New York, you know, with the Ray Harlan project, but then that was done mostly remotely uh, because of the pandemic. What is like these days to be managing your time between New York and New Mexico City? It's fun. I, I mean, I've always been a traveler. Um, I've been teaching for some years and sometimes I've been teaching in the US, so I was traveling a lot already. The pandemic, I stopped uh, teaching, but now I'm traveling for work, um, and I have a very supportive partner. Um, so it's it's always fun, and I have very dear friends in New York, so it makes it feel like home. That's nice. Yeah, That's for sure. Friends in the city makes things a yes. lot easier. Um, the teaching it's something that you've done it quite a bit already. It's something you continue to look forward. I mean, sure, right now time is could be an issue, but yes. uh, you clearly you enjoy it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I learn a lot. I think that I'm the one that, has, that, that is learning. Um, and yes, right now there is no time. But I do have a couple of options uh, that I'm looking for. And maybe in the next couple of years when things settle a little bit more mm -hmm. with a new office and you know like the new projects, I can retake that. I think it's important you know, like to have conversations with younger people and to also be able to question some of the ideas that you're not able to question in uh, practice. You know? uh, I think it's, it's a good reminder of where you want to go, what you want to be, who are you working for. When you have those conversations with students, what do you see, is that like a common not concerned, but common question that will see most of them are most of the concern about as they're leaving from becoming a student to actually get in the marketplace? I think that's true. And I think it's very encouraging to see them asking questions that mm -hmm. uh, might be a little bit harder to answer once you are involved in a regular practice. Nowhere, of course, like there are a lot of um, financial challenges and you're related to, you know, like you have to respond to a client, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you're in school, you are able to ask these questions and really figure out like what architecture is in reality, you know, because it's of course um, a, a profession that needs to resolve practical issues, but at the same time, you can answer many of your own questions mm -hmm. through your practice. So I think that's important to remember. Do you feel that the school uh, system overall, of course, different universities have different practices, it has changed quite a bit since when you were a student and how it is today? I think so. I mean, at least in my experience, um, I've been lucky enough to work with amazing uh, female deans uh, in the past few years. And I've seen that they're very involved. Uh, they're very close to the students. And they give professors, at least from my perspective, a lot of freedom of what the questions need to be mm -hmm. and how the exercises that we're proposing for the students are developed. You know? So they have become a little bit less um, classic you know, in the terms of what is architecture. We're talking more about space rather than uh, objects. And that's very interesting to me. What is one thing that you like your students walk away from one of your classes? 
I like to feel like they are developing their own voice. Uh, so when students come to me and say like, this is the first time that I feel like I'm doing something that I'm really interested in, that's uh, the highlight. You know? Developing your, your, your own voice is, is an interesting thing because as an architect or a design student, you're influenced by so much. There's so much that came before you. How do you come about or any suggestions that you can observe that but also create your own, as you mentioned, your own voice, or your own spin into the design. I don't know, like, I think it's resonance maybe, you know, like, you like the things that you see or that you hear because they relate to who you are and what your personal story is and where you want to go. Um, so I think it's a lot of intuition uh, and we need to listen more to that um, because it connects you, uh, not just to the persons that you're making reference to, you know, like connecting you to the mm -hmm. past, but I think it's moving those ideas forward to the future you know, and you are the one that are translating them and reinterpreting them and therefore making them new. So I think Think that, that that part is very human you know, and very fundamental. The intuition part is it's something that I find it um, very unique because architecture, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is a, is, a, is a both brain kind of situation. You have a very analytical aspect that needs to make sense of it, but also you have a creative side of it that you try to innovate or come up with something different. It's almost like when People sometimes want a blank canvas or can do whatever they want, but when you give limitations, when opportunities for creativity really rises to solve the problem. And I think that's where a lot of architects really shine. Do you think creativity is something that you can exercise? It is, uh, it's a muscle. I do, yes. I think it's, um, it's something that is more alive the more you exercise it. You know, like it's uh, it's part of the, the the thinking process, but also I think it's an attitude. You know, mm -hmm. like toward towards life. You know, like curiosity, um, the, the 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 ability to be surprised uh, constantly. Um, and I think nowadays it's more difficult. You know, like with all the uh, stimuli that that we have, it's it's difficult to focus on a few things. So. Now, curiosity has to do more with silence and uh, being able to be quiet rather than to feel excited. And that feels like a contradiction many times, but I feel like it's necessary to think about that in that way, you know, like you need to calm down, uh, slow down, and then be able to see things with different eyes. Do you have, through the years, have you acquired uh, like a routine to kind of get in that mental state or mm -hmm. happens more like a spontaneous? <laughs> Yes, the, 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 the routine thing is not a thing for me. <laughs> it's always changing. Um, but I do feel like um, some of my dear friends anchor me, you know, being home anchors me, uh, seeing my family. Um, so there are moments of silence. And, and of course, I travel a lot alone mm -hmm. and I enjoy very much being on my own uh, and just walking around the city and being uh, and the type of silence when you're just with you and your ideas. So that's something that I really enjoy as well. I can relate to that. I drive my wife's crazy. I'm like, you're so quiet all the time. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot going on, but it's in here. <laughs> that's right, yes. <laughs> it's always noisy. <laughs> yes. You're just not hearing. Um, at what age did you figure it out that you wanted to be an architect? It was almost an accident. Um, because I finished school when I was 17, uh, high school, mm -hmm. um, and I had to choose. And I think that's always like so tricky, you know, like people are so young when, when they need to decide what career to pursue. And particularly in Mexico, you don't have like this major minor system. Yeah. You, you need to make a decision and that's it. Um, and I was in between fine arts, design, architecture, um, and I had to apply. And I think it was the first one that I needed to apply to. So I went for it and my parents were always very supportive, you no? Know? And they said like, well, if you make a mistake, it's not a mistake actually, you no? Know? Like you would be able to work uh, with a different kind of structure. And I, I think they were right in a way, like mm. architecture for me is a way of establishing a uh, specific idea structure, you know? it's a way of thinking. And of course, an architect can practice in so many ways. Um, it's such a broad um, spectrum uh, that it provides that it was like there, there's no way that we can be mistaken, you know, like mm -hmm. if I change my mind and I go to fine arts, it gives me uh, a strong base. Yeah. 
but I loved it. The first week I was hooked, so I stayed in architecture. And at what point did you realize you fell in love with it? I think it was the first week, you know, like when you spend like right a, away. Uh, yes, uh, you have an old lighter and it doesn't feel painful and you're enjoying it. Um, I don't know, like I think there are a couple of uh, magical moments where you're in architecture school, no? like the first time that you're able to translate something that is very abstract, that feels almost like an atmosphere that you're imagining in your head and you're able to communicate it to someone else through, I don't know, plants or a model. Uh, that's the first thing, like you're able to communicate something uh, that was almost an emotion into something that's more practical. Um, and then the second time that that magic happens is when you see that translated into a physical space. No, I think that's those, those are beautiful moments. Was there ever a point during school that you realized, I'm actually good at this? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. No. Um, <clears throat> No, you know, like, um, I do appreciate the, the recognition, yes. but um, I don't know, like, you're, you're always, like, trying to see if you're going to get better at it. You, you find know? yourself being your worst critic? Maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. A lot of times. <laughs> yes. So those college years, the school years, what was a big influence for you? Um, well, I think during those years, um, I had like this philosophy professor, Alejandro Hernandez, mm -hmm. um, and he he has been a good friend since then. And but, but it was his class probably that influenced me the most. I mean, I was not in touch or in contact with uh, that kind of approach, no, of philosophy and physical space. And unfortunately, I took that class very late, mm. uh, and and. Um, and graduate school, no, it was um, bachelor's, the bachelor's degree. Um, so I think I would have been like much luckier if I had met him before. Um, yeah, I think that was a, a big influence of mine. What about the class that really made an impact? Well, I think for me before that, architecture was more about like practicality, you know, like how mm. to solve a problem, like you were given these exercises and it was about housing or it was about a public building. And of course, you had a history class. Um, you had another wonderful professor, Gigio Lacarozzi, uh, who was the, the history, uh, architecture history teacher. She was also great. Um, but it was like this thing that space really talks about, like how we behave as humans, how we interact with each other, uh, where we're going. Uh, like that was the, the first time that I encountered someone who was thinking about it in that way. When I had the chance to talk to a few students, something that uh, they like, they express in quite a bit is the intensity of the program. Mm -hmm. Being an architect student's not very easy, long hours, short days. Do you think that's a prerequisite to kind of prepare for the work coming ahead? Or there's, there's room to be a little bit more laid back and an opportunity to enjoy yourself a little bit more? Mm -hmm. It's a good question um, because it is a big responsibility, you know, like we're in charge of managing um, work not just for ourselves but for large teams, teams of people mm -hmm. big budgets sometimes or small budgets but that mean a lot to people yeah. um, so I think the responsibility is huge but I do find that the pace and uh, which things are being made these days is faster you mm. know like we have new technologies and we have new tools to design mm. but it feels like time is compressing and I think that's a loss, you know, like we, we need time to also be able to see, to be curious, to explore ideas, to be able to discuss, um, to compare. And I think now there's very little time uh, to do that. People seem like they're uh, in this urgency of being like able to finish things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's just the world <laughs> and how it's moving. I do you... Do you embrace some of that new technology? I mean, there's certainly a lot of conversation about AI in mm -hmm. space, and that's just the beginning of what future is going to look like. Yeah. Do you have a specific point of view on, on those things? I think it's an interesting tool, you know, and as long as we see it as a tool, um, it's it's uh, an opportunity, you know. Um, I was very curious, you not know, like when um, the, these technologies to develop uh, new images just by like. Um, writing up words. Quite uh, fascinating. Yes, right? it's yeah. quite fascinating. Um, 
and I was really curious. Not like, okay, let's let's try a few things. And unfortunately, like the the results were completely opposed to what I was thinking. So I feel like there is still a chance to be able to um, create the narrative behind what is being produced and to be able to control it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the narrative continues to be very human. So as long as we keep it that way and we see it as something that can help us develop a new kind of language, um, I think we'll be fine. You know, like yeah. at the end of the day, I still feel like architecture is very human and there is uh, an aspect of it that could be represented in that way, but that's not the only way. You know? Like when yeah. that tool is lost, we still have so many others. Um, and it's more about the collaboration and the interaction and the people that you're working with, you know? whether it's the client or um, also the, the team uh, or the consultants. There's so much input from so many people that it would be very hard for just one tool to be doing like the work of all yeah. of these minds. Yeah. yeah, and the language aspect is an interesting because I see almost like a, a different language, right? Because the way I notice these days, whatever you are inputting, if you put in a very specific style of architecture, that's what one, the only thing that understands. It's not understanding what perhaps you know, traditional Mexican architecture looks like because it wasn't taught how to do that. So when you try and incorporate that, it's reinterpreted with a vision of somebody else. It's almost like certain things doesn't translate from Spanish to English. Correct. So I think it's still a little ways to go before we can fully comprehend and be able to take a advantage in a way that feels more human, which as you mentioned, likely we never will because sometimes it takes so many people to be collaborative in a project like this. Yes. How was for you growing up in Mexico City? I mean, it's been, you were very much embraced the culture. You're very much out there being an ambassador for your country. <laughs> Do you feel a sense of responsibility as well? A little bit, yes. Um, but I still feel like it's such a cosmopolitan city that um, people are visiting a lot now and people really are starting to understand the, uh, the richness and the, uh, the past that we have, you know. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm not the only one, of course. Like, I think every Mexican is a little bit of an ambassador, you know, like we yeah. love our country and uh, we are always inviting people to come over. Uh, there's like this sense that um, we, we, we embrace people visiting us, you know, we, we like that. So. Is there a, a, a difference if you were to not classify it, but to describe someone what modern Mexican architecture looks like or use a reference, mm -hmm. how would you do that? I don't think that there's a single um, look or feel or... Um, spirit you mm -hmm. know like there are several ones depending on who's designing it but i think there's a very strong focus on materiality um and also like an inevitable link to the past you no know? like our city is so complex and so rich and so informed by all of these different layers that it's almost like natural to have part of those layers expressed in the new architecture now you are traveling quite a bit these days uh, and before we always uh, finish any of the shows, there's a couple of questions that I ask everybody. So, uh, first of all, is a book. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a, not only a favorite book, but perhaps something that you read recently that you like to recommend? Um, yes, I do have one. Um, and it was written by my sister Maria, okay. Maria Gomez de Leon. Um, she's a poet. And the book is called Limfa. And it's uh, a beautiful collection of poets uh, of poems um, that speaks about being a woman, um, and I I highly recommend it. It's beautiful. I check it out. Um, a movie. A movie. Oh, that's a more difficult one. Um, Mauricio, my partner, uh, recommended me La Grande Belleza, mm -hmm. and it's a favorite. Yeah. Beautiful movie. Are you? It's kind of a silly question because there's so many great things happen to you right now. But overall, when you look at the state of where you are, but also the world around you, are you optimistic about the future? Sometimes I, I feel like I'm not. Um, there are so many things happening in the world right now. Um, 
but then you see the kindness of a person or someone uh, smiling at a tree in the street and then that gives me hope no like so yeah I think it's a it's a difficult moment uh, but as humans we always seem to pull through no and to be able to still communicate and do beautiful things to one another so I'm I'm hopeful I want to thank you so much for joining us today. We are so thrilled to have you here, not only participating on the show with us, but also officially joining the CDA family as the recipient of the Lepri Shalom Kiryan. Uh, we couldn't be happier, and I want to congratulate you on your success. I know there's many, many more things to come, and uh, I do look forward to staying in touch. I know your sister is in Austin, close to me, and we're in New York quite a bit. We love Mexico City, so I'm sure we're going to do this more time over and over again. Well, thank you so much for having me. This thank is you. an honor. Minded Podcast, powered by the CDA Paris Edition. Presented by Maison et Objet and Paris Design Week.